So let's talk about this required practical to do with reaction times. Now when I'm talking about reaction time, I'm talking about the speed an organism reacts to a stimulus. So remember, a stimulus is a change in the organism's environment. So, so how quickly does it respond? And there are lots of things that affect that. You might have seen when you're going along the motorway, signs like uh, this one just here, tiredness can kill, take a break. And that's because if you are fatigued, if your brain is not working as rapidly as possible, it increases your risk of having an accident. Your, your reaction time becomes longer. It takes more distance your car travels before you start uh, reacting to something. If that's uh, a little bit of a confusing concept, um, there are videos that you can watch to do with re uh, stopping distances in physics. So this experiment is as pretty basic as they go, but with it, it's got its subtleties. Essentially, the most common way I've seen this done is you have something like a, uh, like a meter ruler. And then what you do is you take this meter ruler and person number one dangles the ruler in between the fingers of person number two. So over here, we have a person, that's person one. And over here, we have person two. Two, although I have just noticed that this hand doesn't actually seem to be attached to a body. It is a detached hand. That's kind of dark for clip art. Anyway, so person one holds the ruler between the outstretched fingers of person number two, and then uh, at a random, and that is a really important point, a random point drops it. The person, person two responds to this stimulus, moves their fingers in, and tries to catch the ruler. And basically this is all to do with how far does the ruler fall before it is caught. If it falls a long way, falls a long way, well what does that mean? It means that the person's reacting very slowly. So they have a slow reaction time. That's terrible, let's try that sentence again. Slow reaction time um, because it has more time to fall and if it falls a short distance well that means they have a got a quick reaction time not a lot of time is elapsing before they pinch their fingers in and catch the ruler so bearing in mind that this is a this is a random process where does the subtlety come in well, it is all to do with variables. So we're gonna have a quick walk through some different ways that you could do this experiment, but let's just focus on variables first of all. So your independent variable, now bear in mind variable is something you can change in an experiment, a factor you can alter. The independent variable is the one that you change on purpose. And we'll talk about the the different independent variables that you may test when you do this experiment in a moment. You then have the dependent variable, which in this case uh, is the reaction time, it is the result you measure. Dependent variable, of course, because it depends on the independent variable. And then finally, control variables, control variables. They are the ones you've got to keep the same every time you do this. You are allowed to change the independent variable. That's fine. Everything else, as much as possible, you've got to try and keep the same. So there are, like I say, there are different ways that you can approach this experiment, different ways that you could do it. Um, Let's take a few for example. So I've seen this done with um, stimulants. Like caffeine. So then what you do is you give a person, let a person do this, this ruler drop thing. And then you feed them something with caffeine in and then you, know, you let them have another go. So let's just uh, have a look at then what are our variables? What's our independent, dependent and control variables? So in this case, the independent variable is stimulant. Is the stimulant or not? 
has the person ingested a stimulant? Now notice the order that I said that you do this. You need to make sure that you do the uh, ruler drop without the stimulant and then you give them the stimulant and then you go again. If you try to do it the other way around, if you gave them the stimulant first, you'd be sat around for ages waiting for the, the caffeine to wear off. The dependent variable is with all of these different uh, variations, is gonna be the reaction time. Now I must just quickly address here, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, hang on a second, you're talking about measuring a distance on the ruler. How does that equate to time? Well, what you do is you take that result and you've usually got available some sort of conversion chart. You know, 10 centimeters equals that kind of time. So you can convert that distance into a time. What then are your control variables? What do you need to keep the same? Well, this is where the subtleties of this experiment come in. So where you measure from. Let me explain. When you drop this ruler and it falls between uh, person two's fingers, their fingers will clamp on him. And that's fine, it will, it will stop the ruler from falling. Do you then measure from the top of their fingers or from the bottom? Now, honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as you do it the same every time, as long as it is controlled. So where you measure from. The distance uh, between their fingers has to be tightly controlled. You can't have them miles apart for one go and then right really close in the next go. They've got to be, <laughs> those, look like, those look like crab pincers. And they're blue, that's okay. You can't, you can't change that distance, it's got to remain at the same each time. Factors like dominant hand or not. You can't test one person with a stimulant with their dominant hand and another person on their weak hand with no stimulant. You, you, kind of, you, you, can't, you can't run that kind of comparison. So you've got to, um, you've got to keep the hand the same. And there, there are lots of others, but those are just three off the top of my head. Uh, how else could you do this? Well, like I said, you might choose to uh, look at hands. So you could choose the independent variable as being the dominant or non-dominant hands. Basically, do you, do, do you react faster with your dominant hand or with your non-dominant hand? You see, you can investigate that. That's another way of doing this that I've seen done. A dependent variable, in this case, would still be reaction time. So you've converted that distance the ruler has fallen uh, into a time by using a conversion chart. And your control variables are going to look very much the same as the previous one. You're talking about finger distance. Uh, you're talking about measurement. But also now, you've got to have stimulants. That's got to creep in because you're changing the hand that somebody is using. You are not um, changing this, whether they have a stimulant or not. So you can't give them a go with their dominant hand, let them drink a cup of coffee, and then let them have another go with their non-dominant hand. You see, you've got, to, you've got to control it, you see. You can even, if you want to do this experiment a different way, you can look at age. So like, uh, looking, comparing a young person with an older person, because your a, your reaction time does increase as you get older. So in this case, the independent variable would be age. The dependent variable would still be reaction time, because after all, that's the focus of this whole required practical. And the control variables Well, let's see if we can come up with some new ones. I mean, we'll take we'll take as read that we're going to control the finger distance and the measurement and the stimulant. But what about stuff like fatigue? Like, are they both uh, equally rested? Something like the uh, degree of practice that they've had. 
uh, if the younger person has loads of practice before they have their, their official test measurement, that gives them an advantage over an older person who has had no practice. So again, you have to control things like practice. And I guess we'll, we'll have the old one, hand dominance. You can't have the the older person using uh, their dominant hand and the younger person using their non-dominant hand because you would not be controlling that variable. So, take home message then. It is a, it's a pretty straightforward experiment to do, but the key to this, the key to doing this successfully is the variables. Because if you manage to set up your experiment and control all the variables that you need to, then you'll have a good set of results to compare and you stand a good chance of answering the question, do stimulants increase or decrease your reaction time? Does the dominance of your hand matter? That kind of thing. So variables are king or queen, I guess. Cheers.